What's good? It's your boy Frosty Chasing Dough. You know, I'm out here at King's Brewing Company. They're having a little barbecue event, so I had to come try some bomb ass barbecue. Come along, let's see what's up. Baby, tell me your intentions. Late night, sticky link, baby, we be busting missions. Blowing on my phone, baby, can you stop tripping? Pull up, bend you over and bust out your extensions. Tell me your intentions. Food pork and brisket. They got a avocado crema and barbecue. First bite, let's see. Water, bro. I don't even like fries. Keep it real. All the homies know I don't like fries. You go to In-N-Out, whatever, I don't like fries. These are fries. I like, I'm not gonna lie, I like Asian food, bro. Like, my family be mad because that's all I want to eat. I like Chinese food, sushi, toki. I like, like, the one in barbecue. Like, that's my shit, bro. Like, all that Asian shit, weird shit. That's, it. that's my favorite, bro. I like canes. <laughs> I love canes. Um, oh, Indian food. Indian food. See, I like weird shit, bro. Like, I like curry. I like all the people be like, uh, you know, but that's bomb. Like, Indian food, I like, uh, some Indian food I like is like tiki masala, butter chicken, like all that shit. My boy Naveed, my manager Naveed put me on to, uh, like Middle Eastern food, like uh, Afghanistan, Pakistan food. Like, that's just kind of like Mexican food is rice, meat with like hummus. So that's just fire too. I like expensive shit, bro. And if you know me, strawberry, kiwi, everything. This one's good, but my favorite one is the Arizona. I mean, y'all stores are tripping, trying to charge 150 for a fucking Arizona. It still says 99 cents on the fucking can. Like, come on, inflation is crazy, bro. <laughs> come on, come on. Um, well, since like middle school, bro, I just been fucking around, like writing music, you know? I used rap as like a therapy to my mom had a ovarian cancer and my pops had a heart attack. I stayed with the homie's mom and him for a little bit, you know? And I didn't really have, I don't have no siblings, so I didn't have nobody to really like talk to, you feel me? My notebook and my pencil were like the way to like get my feelings out, you know? But that's what, I wasn't recording or anything yet. When all that shit happened, I kind of started fucking up, started doing this, you know? And I kind of lost the love for music, because music been in my life forever, you know? I say the story all the time, how my grandma used to make me sing in Spanish and shit. When I hit high school, when I ended up getting transferred out from Diamond Ranch to Village Academy, um, the homie Guap, he, uh, he was the one that was made, like the rapper in our school, he was the one making music. But he was on like some trippy red XXX shit, you know? He was freestyling at lunch one day, like, you know, banging on the table. Remember when he used to do the mm. 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 When it's up at nigga. Now he running like a track race. Mm. That shit uh, at lunch shit. So we started freestyling. Shout out my boy Julian. He was recording the whole thing, fool. I first off for like three minutes straight. They stopped and Robbie was like, eh, hey, did you record that? Did you record that? He's like, yeah. He's like, fool, I stole a Chromebook from the school. What's up? I got FL on it. Come in my crib, let's record. And I was like, fuck it, I don't got nothing to do with this school, let's roll. And I went and uh, I did my first song, Bang Bros. That shit hit like 1K in a week on SoundCloud, fool. After that, still kind of fucking around, but I would try to drop a song like once a month, every two months, you know? I try to be consistent. But yeah, that's how I started rapping, but then, um, you know, like uh, when I took it serious, serious was when I found out my, my baby mama was pregnant and I was gonna be a dad. I completely did a full 360 on my life, bro. Like I was, I beat a case because I beat some up, press charges like a and, You know, I was just fucking up, bro, getting into it with my pops. I was just doing the wrong thing, bro, heading down the wrong path. and. That's why I say God works in mysterious ways, bro, because when I found out I was going to be a dad, bro, I completely flipped my life around. I took bargaining serious. I took music shit serious. Gladly, around the same time, like, CNG started f***ing with me. So that kind of motivated me, too. Like, okay, a lot of people say I'm good at music, but now someone that does this for a living and is legit is telling me I'm good at this shit. And that's told me, you know, like, like I could go farther than him. I was like, f***ing full fledged. And, you know, I dove right into it, bro. Like, his music shit on. Uh, can nobody take this from me, bro? Like, I'm all in, bro. Like, I ain't no half stepping over here. I'm going 200% on these you know? But yeah, bro. That's why I got into music. I don't care. That's public information. Um, <laughs> so, this one dude, I'm not going to say his name, but uh, this one dude, uh, he, he, me and him since high school, bro. He always did some goofy. He was just a J-Cat fool, goofy, goofy goober. You feel me? Like, he tried to touch my baby mama one time when we were in high school. He uh, called her out her name. 
he tried to pull out, you know, remember those, those, it's like a switchblade, bro, but it's like a comb. He pulled one of those out on me one time, fool, in the alley when I was walking home from school. Like, he was gonna stab me and I shot the nigga in the nose, fool. Like, this is high school. So it was always just little shit, you know? I was stacking up on each other. And I never went looking for this shit, fool. My pops was always like, fool, you're always in the, in the neighborhood right there. He lives right there. You're gonna run into him. You don't have to look for him. You know, just whenever the time is, the time is, you're gonna f him up. So yeah, bro, finished smoking with the homies. And I told one of the homies, like, hey, fool, let's go to 7-Eleven real quick. If you're from Pomona, you know the 7-Eleven on Indian Hill and Kingston. We go to 7-Eleven, get Arizona, gummy worms, whatever. We walk down Indian Hill. It's like 11 o'clock at night, fool. There's an El Super, a grocery store right there. I seen the lights on. I was like, I'm gonna see if the security guard lets me take a piss. And he goes like, nope. He's like, hit the alley. I go to the alley, taking a piss, and I forget that it lives right there, fool. Like, right there. Taking a piss, and I hear someone starts yelling shit. And he's like, fing fast. Whatever. So uh as we're walking by bro, me and the, me and the homie are walking by. I was like, the homie I took all my out of my pocket. I was like, here hold this shit. He's like, why what's up? I'm about to get down with the shit. Cause he was just yelling shit. So I was like, I was like, you know what? I was like, you're a bitch. loud as fuck. Came out. Boom. Him, him, that fool always came out with his bitch, fool. She's that bitch was like three of me, fool, my mama, fool, my mama, I swear to God. Fool, you can ask my baby mom's fool, she looked like a big ass bulldog, fool, tripping on everybody. Like, but yeah, fool, she comes out, him, her, and his pops. No disrespect to his pops, bro. His pops was our neighborhood in Lotero, you know? His pops was cool, fool. His pops try to get at me, like, hey, mijo, you know, like, uh, you guys don't have to fight this and that. And I told him straight up, I told him. I, I told him in Spanish, like, look, fool, like, your, your son has done too much to just let it slide. Like, it's just, we need to squabble it out. And he was like, oh, it's because, you know, he he's older than you. You're a man. This and that. I was like, yeah, exactly. So I'm a man. So get the out the way. And he got out the way, fool, and tried to swing. I weaved it. Boom, socked him in the mouth. He fell. Then he tried to get up and do some sneaky shit, like, pick me up, like, like grab my legs. But I got lower and then I just picked him up, fool. I slammed him, boom, and the homie said this fool like wrapped my head. I don't remember, fool. I just remember seeing red, you know? But the homie said he like wrapped my head and my head was on his chest. And I was just cocked in his mouth, fool. And then he let go and I started bopping him in the, in the mouth again. And then I tried to get up and he hugged my leg. When he hugged my leg, I stomped that nigga twice. Boom. And when I stomped him, his bitch was like, you're a fucking cheap shotter. And she pushed me, boom, boom, I fell. And I got up like, what's up, bitch, you need that too? And she was like, what the fuck? She was recording the whole thing. I'm not lying, you know? And then um, I, re I just remember snapping back into it, fool. And I turned and the homie squaring up with his pops. And his pops was like, I was about to deck that nigga in the back of the head, fool. And then my homie was like, no, 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 no. She's calling the cops. Let's go, nigga, let's go. And his pops was like, I thought you fools were straight. What's up? And I was like, fool, you're lucky I wasn't straight. I like, this bitch out. Like, you know, like, I'm like, damn homeless fool, but yeah, his bitch started calling the cops. So we ran, we ran, fool. We were on St. Paul. If you're from Pomona, you know, Hope and St. Paul. We took up that Hope, started running, nigga. Cut into the, cut into Pasadena, into Abbey Lane. The Abbey Lane is where I grew up, bro. Like, the, there's a bunch of like projects and like apartments and shit. We went in there, fool, and I could hear the sirens. And um, uh, you know, I'm like, fuck, fool, where we gonna hide? I, I called one of the homies, he didn't answer, and I forgot, like, fool, this was with his baby mom and his daughter. Like, I'm not about to pull up to his crib and have the hood pull up with his with his baby moms and his daughter there, you know? So then my, my baby mama lived right there too, her family lived right there, so I was like, her dad always leaves a door unlocked, the front door. Boom, ran to it, put it to her apartment. Ran in there, nigga, and her uncles had just came from Mexico, fool. They were living right there. They woke up like, what the fuck? Like, fool, I'm in there fucking sweaty, fool, from running, fucking breathing all hard. They're like, what happened? And I just got down. I called one of my cousins, my primo. I just got down. Like, this will call the cops, fool. He's like, where you at? He came to pick me up, fool. And so he picks me up and went home. Oh, uh, that. Jenny, when that shit happened? When I beat him up, like, end of July, huh? It was like right after 4th of July, huh? Because remember he let off the firework at uh, your cousin? Yeah, fool, he do stupid shit like that. M84, a little eight-year-old boy, fool. Like, what the fuck, fool? And then he pointed a fucking uh, a black AR, fool, like uh, airsoft. Airsoft. But he spray painted it all black, fool. In my head, I'm like, this nigga, you know? So it was stupid shit like that, bro. So he had it coming to him, fool. And, but yeah, I beat him up, fool. And a few months later, so shit happened like end of July, beginning of August. On Thanksgiving Day, fool, that year. Uh, we're about to go to my baby mom's family's for, for Thanksgiving food to go eat dinner. And my pops comes into the house pissed. Throws a letter at me. Boom. What the is this? He's like, LA County. 
like a judge or whatever. Superior, Supreme Court, LA County Supreme Court. And I was like, what the fuck? I had forgot, fool, you know, I forgot. I was like, okay, after a month, I don't think they can come for you, whatever. I opened the letter and said he had press charges for assault and battery, and assault and battery was a GBI. GBI is great bodily injury. Great bodily injury, I heard, is an extension of like seven years. And then the assault and battery is just five. I got lucky, shout out to God, shout out my boy San Judas, you know? Judge wrote it out because I was a minor, I was 17 at the time, and there wasn't enough evidence proven against me. So like, yeah, fool, and we had just found out she was pregnant. So that's what I'm saying, God works in mysterious ways, bro, you know? After that, I seen that paper, I just found out she was pregnant, I was like, fool, I could have been sitting in this bitch for 12 years for beating some up, yeah, fool. And he was at fault, but you know? The way the law works, fool, it would have been me sitting in that bitch, you know? And uh, I would have missed my son's first birthdays, first words, his first steps, his birth, you know? But yeah, bro, fuck that nigga. You want to hear me? You want to Nigga, fuck yeah, fool. Don't blur, I don't care. I don't even know what the topic is, fool. I mean, yeah, like he seen me in public, don't say nothing, fool. Dex his hair, fool. Because he tried to do something like after two and the homies got at him, you know? But yeah, fool, like, I'm a good kid, fool, I'm really. Not. Like, I don't just fight to fight. I was known for fighting, but I don't just fight to fight. It's just try to poke your butt in. You know? But yeah, for those of you that don't know, I'm first generation, perfectly fluent in Spanish too. My parents are from Mexico. My mom makes good mole. She also makes uh, tamales. My mom is bomb tamales. Where I'm from in Mexico, it's called a uh, pipián. Yeah, huh? The mole de pipián. They make mole de pipián. We're from Aguascalientes. They make mole de pipián. But the difference is they'll like deep fry shrimp and like uh, and like egg, like kind of how they make the chile rellenos. They'll deep fry the shrimp into the fucking, like with the chile relleno and then put it in that sauce, the mole de pipián, with rice and vegetables. Come on, bro. Yeah, my mom was always making everything, bro. Like, the usual was like rice and beans with like a piece of, piece of meat. But like, she would make caldo de pollo. I love caldo de pollo, caldo de res. Like, you know, like, all the traditional Mexican you could think of, you feel me? So like, low-key, like when the homies are like, oh, let's go get Mexican food, I'm like, I don't want to go get Mexican food because I get the bitch at home, you know? <laughs> and I feel like King Taco and all these other spots ain't gonna even make the cut. But yeah, bro, I love, I love everything, bro. I'm, I mean, I'm fat, you feel me? Like, you could tell I eat everything, bro. <laughs> I mean, growing up, I didn't have a lot of food, you know? And that's no diss to my parents or nothing. They worked hard their whole life. They gave me the best they could. And when I started making my own money, I always wanted to buy fly shit, you feel know I me? Mean? Like, I always wanted to look good. I really cared about my hair. I really cared about having my shoes clean. Because I would only get like two pairs of shoes a year, you know? Or a pair of shoes a year. And uh, I always kind of said it, to be real. Like, in high school, I'd be like, yeah, I'm fat, but I'm flyer than you. You know, like, yeah, I'm fat, but I get more than you. Yeah, I'm fat, but, you know, whatever. But yeah, bro, I mean, it's... Now it's kind of more like my brand, but it's always just been kind of like my lifestyle, you know? I'm a big boy, but I'm fresh to death. You feel me? Like, niggas can't, niggas can say whatever they want, but they can't say that all that food was dressed sloppy. You know? Never, you know? But yeah. So, Frosty came from, um, me and the homies were just roasting each other one time in high school, and they used to give us like these little ice creams with like, a snowman on it. And I said it before, I used to tag, I used to write Big J. It's whack, you know? So uh, I was trying to come up with a new name for him. The homie was like, you that this food Frosty showed the ice cream man, I mean the snowman. And I was like, Frosty. I was like, I'm gonna start writing Frosty. And they were like, yeah, that's hard, you know? And I wrote it down in my stilo and I was like, okay, that shit cool. And then when I started making music, when I started making music, that was around like when YBN was out, YNW, so it was always like YNW something, YBN something, SOB, whatever, you know? Bravo the Bat Chaser, you know? Shit like that. So I was like, Frosty, Frosty. And I was known for like always trying to do something to make money, sell chips, sell weed, whatever. So the homie was like, fool, you're always chasing money. I was like, chasing girl, frosty chasing dough. It sounded good. I was like, fuck it, frosty chasing dough, you know? And it made sense because that was really me. It's me, you know? It's to this day, I slang with haircuts, whatever, you know? But yeah, bro, like, really, that's really me, like, frosty chasing dough. I'm always trying to figure out what's my next play or whatever to make some bread, you know? My old high school, I went to Diamond Ranch High School, or my freshman and half of my sophomore year. I got caught selling some shit. My baseball coach, when I got in trouble, I was gonna—I I was already in the process of getting uh, transferred out to, uh, to another school. And he was like, hey, Papa, like, you know, you wanna make some money? In my head, my stupid ass at the time, I'm like, most oh, food about to give me a play or some shit. <laughs> that nigga's like, oh, my barber's looking for a new sweeper. I'm 15, you know? And I'm like, sweeper? What the f I look like sweeper here? But he's like, come on, just try it. He took me to the barber shop. I met the owner, shout out my brother Darion, shout out uh, Manny. Owner of the cutting room, my brother Daniel knows the vibe. Um, I walk in there, and you know, I get to meet them, bro, and I just click through, like, mind you, these people are like 30 years old, but like, they 
up with the little hustler mentality I had, you know, I was a little go-getter, so, yeah, bro, uh, I started sweeping hair at, like, 15, and I was always asking questions, like, hey, bro, why you use this clip? Hey, bro, why you do this, you know? Uh, it was always interesting to me, and I would get free haircuts once a week. And these people started uh, telling me, like, look, we'll line you up first, and then we'll give you a haircut. So that's how I started learning. I started lining my shit up first. And then the homies see me lining up, all, lining myself up all the time. Hey, fool, line me up. Line them up. And lining up went to cutting their hair. So uh, C and G, me and him had a lot of mutuals. He, uh, he grew up with a lot of my cousins. When I started making music, bro, I guess they were in his ear about me, you know? And at first, he didn't take me serious because like, now I know too, bro. Like, I get hit up every day. Like, oh, I make music. Like, who's don't really take it serious, you know? Like, oh, I don't put out music because this, blah, blah, blah. They're scared or whatever. Uh, but yeah, they were in his ear and he had a show on Pomona. And he'll tell you the same thing. Like, I was always hitting this nigga up, blowing him up on Instagram. But uh, he had a free show on Pomona. I pulled up with the homies. Pulled me up on stage, bro, towards the end of the show. Let me do a song. Killed that shit. After that, it was just, what's up? We gonna come to a music video? What's up for a studio session? Then we started going to the studio every week from 8 to 8, 12 hours. Every week, I wouldn't miss. If I had a work full, he'd call me. I'd leave work go to studio and if I had to be at work this next day, I'd still go to work the next day, you feel me? So yeah, bro, like, yeah, that's how I met him and, you know, I signed in September. You know, I'm part of Solid Mom now, I'm his first artist. But yeah, bro, uh, it's a dream come true, really, bro. And, you know, it's just the beginning. We just finished tour. I uh, just took back down from Colorado. We had a show in Idaho, in Boise, Idaho, and in Denver, Colorado. But yeah, bro, it's cool, like, you know, floating for Shirley, I'm gonna make it for Colorado got a dope little scene, bro. We're out there because of uh, you know, my boy Cacho, shout out Bison Movement. Cacho's like one of the biggest promoters in Colorado right now for Grasshop. He booked us for the show. Swade's cousin on uh, Parkside Plugs. He stays out there. So uh, me and him just, we have a song on my new tape that just dropped the other day. He said, what's up? We're we out here to shoot a video. Got the camera guy, whatever. We shot at the B&B &B we are staying at. And then he plugged me in with FVP West, all the homies from FVP. Shout out all the homies from FVP and 6L. But yeah, bro, they got FVP West, FVP X. Got plugs out there. Little Nate. Shout out my boy, Little Nate. Uh, Lo Traviesos, homie. Rest in peace, Lo Traviesos, you know? Yeah, those kids are all cool, fool. Like, <laughs> I was tripping out because they talk like us out here, you know? They talk like cat niggas, for real. Like, but yeah, bro, uh, it was dope. I, we did a, got a couple records in. I got one with Wes. CNG got one with Little Nate. The one with plugs, me and plugs, that's just hard. We all could go tap in. It's on Spotify right now. Fire on me. Cross Chase and Dope Future Parks like plugs. But yeah, bro, shout out all my family. Shout out all my brothers from Denver, Colorado. So, I just finished this sandwich. Killed that shit. This is too much food, bro. But yeah, it's fire. Fries are bomb. If y'all check out when it's in the barbecue, get their fries with both meats, with the brisket and the pulled pork. Pork sandwich fire. I rate the 10 out of 10. The meat wasn't dry. The flavor was there. Crema with the barbecue sauce was bomb. The pickled onion on Shit was fire. Yeah, I don't even like coleslaw. That coleslaw was good. It was creamy. Shit was good, bro. But yeah, 10 out of 10. If you want some fire barbecue, check out 27 uh, barbecue. Yeah, yeah, I recommend them. Vice Fat Food approved. If y'all want to get some good drinks, some good food, good vibes, you can tap in with King's Brewing Company. The vibes is like, for sure out there. They're immaculate. They for sure, they for sure turned out. I'm just serving up the junkies, feeding for the next dose. Protecting pride, I mean, and watching enemies the most. See any fucking movement, we gon' turn them to a ghost.